No, I'm not the Giants personnel. They have Barkley, they have Odell, Eli's history. Is that enough to keep them on alert and not overlook the record? I hope so. No, they're, uh, the Giants have uh, an incredible set of skill players. Um, and it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us this week. Uh, the tight end, Evan Ingram, is really good. Uh, Odell is obviously really good. Saquon Barkley is phenomenal. Well worth uh, the draft pick. Um, even uh, Shepard's a really good player. So it's it's going to be a great challenge for us this week. Can you go back and compare Odell this year to last year to see if there's any hitch in his giddy up or anything like that? No, I, I don't see a hitch in his giddy up at all. He's he's still a, a, a big problem uh, for, for defenses. Richard was just saying it was kind of a, a big thing for him to be able to play two games in such a short turn. How do you think he did uh, just you know making that quick turn? Thought he did well. Sherm, Sherm knows his body more uh, better than anybody, obviously. And but uh, um, his mindset, he he looked fantastic yesterday. Uh, it was probably his best practice in terms of just the freshness of his legs and all that stuff. So, um, uh, I'm sure it was a great confidence boost for him too. Even at even as much as he's done in his career, he he could always use a confidence booster. But uh, but for Sherm to be able to stack days up and be able to practice or practice and play games consecutively like that, I'm sure is a big deal for him. He's a little more than halfway through this season. You all are, obviously. But how would you just kind of assess the way he's he's come along? This season? He's been awesome. Uh, obviously, he's the healthier he gets, the better he is. But uh, I have zero complaints on Sherm. How beneficial have, have the extra four days been uh, just for the rest and recuperation? Big time, at least for me. Well. I don't know if I get as much rest. I got five little kids at home. They all jump in bed. But no, it's been great for the players. Uh, obviously, we still go through and watch tape and, and are trying to trying to piece together some things. Kyle did a great job, gave us some rest too. But uh, rest is always the best remedy when you're dealing with uh, 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 when you're in season, wherever you can still time and still the ability to, to just rest and sleep and, and re, re-energize yourself is always beneficial. How do you look at what the pass rush did on Thursday, just given that, yeah, you were credited with eight sacks, but also there were some extenuating circumstances along that Raiders offensive line? It, it is a little bit of both. I, I thought our D-line did a great job, great job uh, with executing the game plan and, and being relentless in pass rush. Um, a double team is a double team, and Buck just, just manhandling and working through double teams the way he did, uh, getting Dakota back with him and Marsh both, the way they were collapsing the pocket is kind of, a great picture of what we were, we've been wanting our pass rush to look like with two guys collapsing the pocket and uh, uh, two guys pushing the pocket. So it was a really good, really good execution. And, you know, it is uh, unfortunate for Oakland standpoint, they are dealing with a lot of issues and having to move people. But uh, I still give a lot of credit because we there's still NFL football players and we still had to go out and execute and they did. Along, along the pass rush lines, is there things you can take from that game um, that you can Use towards the next one, or kind of momentum to take from a pass rush standpoint. That it, it is. It's showing them the picture that they created. Uh, uh, our, our players did a great job, and there's a picture when you just stop the film and what it's supposed to look like. There were a lot of really good examples of that in the uh, in the game, and for them to see that, visually see it, and continue to repeat repeat that over and over and over again uh, is going to be the challenge for the remaining. Uh, see for the remainder of the season. Is Dakota's role different just in terms of where he's lining up uh, this year than, than last year? Uh, we're relying on him a little bit more from a pass rush standpoint. Uh, he's still backup Sam linebacker, um, but as far as he is more uh, defensive line oriented than he was a year ago. What, what went into that decision? You know, we just felt like he provides some juice off the edge, his uh, speed, power. Uh, he can he can run the hoop and capture edges and and he's able to transition the power. He's a very strong player, especially for his size, and um, and so we just felt like if he could just focus on that all off season, he could get better, and he has. He he was talking about going vegan and, and losing some weight. Is that something that you were aware of, and have you seen the benefits? Of that? You know what? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you, but there uh, we have a tremendous nutrition team with Jordan and. Uh, I think Ray Wright and uh, Ferg do a great job from a training standpoint and strength and conditioning. So whatever the plan was for him, I, I, I'm sure it was well executed. You mentioned Barkley being a great pick. Uh, his rushing average is down, but he has a lot of big plays in the passing game. How big of a challenge is he to match up with? Uh, he's a uh, god, uh, <laughs> Grant. He's, he is dynamic now. He's, uh, 
he's got for his size like you you can't it's very deceptive because it doesn't look like he's moving but son of a gun's moving uh he's got tremendous balance he's got great uh great feet he's uh obviously using the pass game i think they're pretty much even rushing the passing yards but his actual yards per carry are sitting at i think four seven uh so he's he's doing a really good job running the ball he creates holes I don't want to put him in Barry, Barry Sanders' uh, world yet. He's got chance, but he just has a knack. He's got great patience. He finds holes. He makes people miss. Uh, well worth the investment, for sure. With the bye upcoming, what, what's the balance you're trying to strike with Ruben, with getting him on the field, getting him the reps that he needs at this point, or saying, well, we have an opportunity to give him two weeks of rest to really get healthy? Ruben's got to get healthy. Uh, that's that's first and foremost. When he's healthy, he's a fantastic football player, and um, and so for Ruben, everything, all all his energy and focus right now is uh, uh, with regards to his body, is uh, with uh, Ray and uh, um, Ferg, and and then obviously mentally, he's in all the meetings. So reading between the lines on that, then is it? Are you leaning towards not playing him Monday night? Well, it, again, as as the week progresses, okay. so it's he's he's got to get right for sure. Uh, I was going to say, it seems like uh, Kylo's bounced back a little bit these past two weeks. What have, what have you seen from him? Uh, Kylo's mindset. Um, you know, when he finished last year, uh, just, and, and it happens to a lot of second year players, we talked about this, uh, you know, like a couple weeks ago. They get into this, I don't want to say an I got it mode, but they feel more comfortable in their surroundings and they forget uh, uh, what made them great as rookies. It was their mindset to just do right all the time. And uh, the balance of life happens. And right now, Akello has got tremendous focus and spending all his energy on, on recapturing what he had his rookie year. And uh, his strength at the line of scrimmage, his aggressiveness, his mindset is what's been helping him through these last four games. And he's starting to, we're starting to see what we saw last year. Was there a time that you saw it kind of switch a couple weeks ago? Was there a practice? <laughs> uh, the switch came after our home game against Arizona. Uh, there were a couple of plays uh, that showed on tape that we that we were able to pinpoint for him uh, to create a visual, and then from there he took off. and uh, and And for Akello, he's taken every step he's needed to take, and so I'm excited to see him finish out the season, see how see how much better he can get. How was Jim, how was Jimmy played at, at free safety, and do you look at this as an opportunity, just given you know his uncertain future that? Maybe he could re-solidify himself as, as this team's free safety heading into this offseason. You know, our faith in Jimmy has never wavered. Um, obviously, anytime you get a chance to step on the football field in any capacity, whether you're, uh, it doesn't matter the position, it's always an opportunity to prove that you can play in this league. And for, for Jimmy, uh, being able to get through the season healthy and to play at the level he has been playing with, uh, we have always felt he's one of our best 11 players. We don't keep that a secret. Uh, and uh, for him, to, the challenge is going to be stay healthy. And when he is out there, he puts on really good tape. So Eli Manning's been getting sacked a lot, and the Giants have been struggling to score points. What have you seen from Eli in particular this season? Um, you know what? There, uh, there's a lot of things that can go into play there. I, I still think Eli is tremendous, uh, has, has got great arm strength. I, I still think he can throw the ball with great accuracy. Uh, they're learning a new system. They're trying to... Uh, uh, re-gel with one another. You got to remember that he didn't have his entire group all of practically half the year a year ago, and then you're implementing a new system, a new coaching staff, and trying to get re-acclimated with one another. So, uh, I do think they've gotten better over the past few weeks uh, compared to the first couple of games of the year, and uh, and I know there's always there's always a uh, perception, but the reality is like when you when you watch a tape, they're a very very talented offense. And they're, they're just a few plays from really clicking. And so it's going to be a challenge for us. And there's no way we can sleep on them. So some of your guys on defense have talked about how competitive Mullins is when he's running the scout team, uh, things like that. I'm just curious your perspective on, uh, did, you, did you see a lot of the same things from him, uh, from, from the defense? The competitive side? drive and all yeah. that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he, because uh, I'm, I'm always in his ear. I was like, dude, you got to throw the ball. Because, it, you know, for us in our zone coverages, it's all about timing, trying to tie our rush to our coverage. and. And he won't throw it. And I'm like, throw the ball. And he's like, no, I'll get a th I can't throw an interception. A coach will get mad at me. And I'm just, no, I'm not. And I was like, all right. So it was always a battle. But he's, he's competitive, you know. And uh, um, so we're guys are excited about him. We're all excited for him. And and the one thing about this league, you got to do it every week. And so he's he's excited to be able to get that opportunity.
we didn't know what to expect from Nick, but the players practice with him. They, they know what he is. And before he played, a lot of them, Matt Breed in particular, a lot of players said, he's a baller. He's going to do well. I mean, did you have that feeling too, what, just watching him practice? Yeah. I, you know, like when you look at a, uh, for one, I think Kyle and his staff do an unbelievable, uh, a great job, a great job uh, uh, putting together a great scheme and putting players in position to be successful. Uh, I think the players that we have here, both offensively, defensively, and special teams, they do a great job mentally of preparing themselves to be able to put themselves in those positions also. And, uh, and for Nick, Nick is relentless in his study habits. He's relentless as a competitor. And so the talent gap in the league is always, you guys know, we always talk about it's minimal, right? And so um, when you get guys who have that mindset, you, it's just hard for you to envision them failing. And so for, for Nick, it was very easy for us to envision him to be successful because we knew that he'd put himself in position to be able to be successful. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.